So welcome to the rent control uh, meeting of July 27th, 2020. Um, as you can see, we are called in on a Zoom conference and um, I'd like to have everybody just announce themselves uh, in the order we usually do just to ensure that we have a quorum. So um, we'll start with you, Chuck, because Craig doesn't seem to be on yet. Yep, I'm back. Oh, there he is. So Craig, you want to introduce Yeah, Craig Barger. Chuck King. Mark Lamb. And Dottie Fulginetti. So we do have a quorum. Um, we are here to hear a status report from the receiver from the mobile home park, um, attorney Frank Morrissey. And we also have our attorney, um, the town attorney, Kate Federoff, and attorney Barker uh, here representing attorney Morrissey. Mr. Barker, Attorney Barker, do you want to uh, give us a little synopsis of what's taken place um, for the for the receivership update? Um, I, I'd be happy to. If um, if you'd permit me, I'm going to try to get the receiver on right now because I do suspect that he uh, ran into the same issue I did, having to not having um, the ability to, to speak. Would you permit me a moment to see if I can get him in here, and he might be able to talk with a little more specificity? Sure. Maybe while they do that, we could just give a little bit of background, you know, as, um, as most people know, uh, the mobile home park in Easton um, has had some real challenges uh, over the last several years, especially since I've been on the board for eight years, I know that we've um, we've had a real challenge getting the park owners to make the capital improvements that they needed to at the park. So um, the town did petition to have a receiver put in place. The receiver collects the rent from the um, tenants at the home at, in the homes, and he is coming up with a plan to try to uh, get the park uh, safe and secure and to bring on um, potentially uh, any buyers to explore the options with him. So he's been on for a few months now, I think since the beginning of the year, and is uh, this will be his first status update to us since he took, took over as the receiver. Uh, Dottie, if I may, the Q&A, uh, we have somebody, or Mike, uh, admin three appears to be Frank Morrissey. He has his hand up and he has commented uh, that that's who he is. So can we move admin three? And Frank, I don't know if you could hear us. We, I can we, hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. We, we, yes. We, uh, you have no video feed, though, so I don't know if you don't have a webcam. Yeah, I do have it on this. I don't know how to turn it on. Uh, bottom left of your screen, right next to the mute button, you should see a stop video icon with a red cross through it. Um, yeah, that, did I... I just, can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, but I'm, I just went to the wrong screen here. My apologies. No problem. Um, if you wanted to give us a, a status update. Since <laughs> I, yeah, I, 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 I apologize. I can't get the camera to work. Um, I'm getting prompted here. Um, th thank you for the opportunity. But first, I, I apologize for being late for the meeting. I'm never late to the in-person meetings. Um, Zoom has been a challenge for someone who went to law school, got out in 1994. <laughs> um, but, so suffice it to say, I can see everyone. Um, and uh, I think my daughter, Katie, told me I had a voice for a face for radio. So may maybe it's a blessing you can't see me. Um, here's where we're, we're at. I, I got appointed um, on January 2nd. I've been a lawyer for more than 20 years. It's a ch it was a challenging assignment. Um, the park was losing tens of thousands of dollars a month when, uh, when I took over. Uh, in addition, the, 
the park suffered from many years of underinvestment. Capital improvements had not been made for a number of years, and th that was a problem for the park. Um, since I took over, you're aware about uh, you're aware of the rent increase, but we've also worked on some of the operational problems. The, the leasing field is back up and running, and that's resulted in significant savings to the park and the estate. Um, so we've been able to operate on a break-even basis. We've been able to do some capital improvements. We focused on the wastewater system, and we've been focusing on the pumps at the lift stations. And we've done some patching of the of the of the roads, but but the focus has been on the wastewater system because that that was the, the critical system that we identified. We've also been able to operate the park in a fashion so that we've been able to build up some cash reserves. Those cash reserves are critical because if we have a catastrophic failure, and thank God we haven't had one yet, but if we had a systems failure, we have money to address it. And because the park has been distressed for so many years, it's very difficult for us to get credit. So, so cash is the only way we have to address a major problem. Thank God we haven't had a major problem. We've had some operational hiccups for sure, like we would in any engagement. But, but so far, we, we, we've been able to avoid the, the, the major systemic errors, the systemic problems. Um, long term, this park requires an owner that we haven't had for a while that has the capital and the expertise to invest in the wastewater systems and the other systems necessary to operate the park in a safe and healthy manner. And what we've done is tried to identify such an owner. And we've identified four potential buyers and the lawyers in the case, Mike Barker in particular, have worked to get the legal and property due diligence over to those buyers. We've set up a data room, which has all of the documents that we succeeded to as the estate fiduciary. We put the potential buyers in touch with the engineers who have historically been working at the property. In particular, we facilitated uh, extensive communications between the buyers and the engineers at CHA and at Weston and Sampson. And, and those engineers know the systems and know what needs to be done to maintain the property and, 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 and get it back to where it should be. We understand from the buyers that that process is substantially done. So the buyers have, 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 have received the due diligence they, they needed. Um, needless to say, our efforts were delayed by COVID. COVID-19 was a was an interruption to what we were trying to do with the park. But we're we're now open and we, we, the buyers advise us that they're they're substantially finished with their due diligence. So the next step is we're negotiating offers from those buyers. We we they they, they remain interested and we're going to try to get an offer from them very shortly. And that offer would be presented to the council for the board and ultimately to the court. We're not going to bring an offer to the court unless we socialize it with the board's council. When and you say the board, you're talking about the Tenants Association? Well, the Tenants Association is going to be making their own offer, um, I understand. But we're going to be uh, we're going to be socializing with the town. So, be, with so the, so the, the town is a stakeholder here. So any proposed buyer that we bring for approval to the court, the town, we're, we're going to talk to the town and identify any issues the town may have. And the town would be invited to the hearing, it required to be at the hearing of any approval of an offer from a buyer. And the court ultimately would make the decision about whether this is an appropriate buyer or not. So there's a process to approve the buyer, the town's at the table in that process. Second, the court's gonna be the ultimate decision maker. Third, we, when we present the buyer to the court, the offer is gonna be subject to only two conditions. The, the, the first condition is that the, the sale is approved by the court. And the second condition is that there's gonna be a court supervised auction. So whatever transaction we present to the court would have the input from the town but it'd be a transaction that both I and the town would be comfortable saying yes to. And that transaction is further tested by an auction. And people are invited to make 
counter offers. And if people don't make counter offers, the person that we propose as a stocking horse offer is the ultimate winner of the auction. And that's the person we close with. So I, I, I feel like I can see, you can't see me, but I can see you. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm talking quickly because I'm not there in person. I, let, let me answer any questions you have. I'm just curious when you say auction, when, if there's a buyer and a transaction goes through, who does the proceeds go to? Does that go back to the original park owner or does that go into some other entity? Well, it depends on what the proceeds are. So there's a waterfall. So the, fir the first money out would go to the, any um, taxes on the property. I think they're first in line to the town. The second would be unpaid expenses of the park that were incurred during the six months I've been in place. Um, third, I believe would go to the mortgagee. And if there's a surplus after payment of the mortgagee, there would be money available to pay people who don't have liens, but provided credit to extended credit to um, the park before my appointment. And then the, the last person on the list is um, the owner. Um, it, it's probably an academic problem because, I, I, you know, give, given the deferred maintenance and, and, and the other issues associated with the park, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure we're going to have a lot of proceeds to, to distrib distribute. There's no, there's, but but the, the distribution of the proceeds is a statutory process. And it, it's, it, it's like a HUD statement. You, you're going to get a HUD statement from this sale process like you would in a residential closing. And you and your lawyers would be able to look at that HUD statement and say, no, that's too much money. Or the money should be allocated in accordance with a different formula. So the allocation of the proceeds, in addition to who the buyer is and what transaction we close on, that's something that the town is invited to comment on and will be able to be heard on in front of the court. So okay. the any, any, so let me say it differently. Any proposed distribution of sale proceeds gets approved by the court. Any proposal with respect to proceeds gets served on the town, and the town has an opportunity to object to the uh, distribution of the proceeds. Okay. And what do you think the timeline is before this uh, starts to materialize? So we have four interested buyers. They tell us that they're substantially done with their due diligence, and they will be making an offer shortly. So once we get an offer, then we're going to go back to the buyers and ask for stuff and, and, and try to improve it and format it in a way that it would be um, acceptable to the town and the court. Um, so the, the, the first event is getting an offer. Then there's a, a week or two of negotiating and improving the offer. And then in order to bring it to the court, I think it would be conservatively a three to four week process. The court would then sign off on the offer and uh, schedule a, a, a um, an auction and a date to approve the ultimate buyer. Um, so, so I would say it's a thirty to sixty day process once we get an acceptable offer. We and we're we're, we're waiting for an offer. That's that's the thing that gets us all moving. Now, if some, if something exigent happened, we could shorten that period but it would have to be compelling circumstances. But the, the judge is going to want a process where everyone has a fair opportunity to weigh in, town and others. Okay. Craig, well, Johnny, Morrison. Morrison. Okay. Go ahead, Chuck. Chuck. I'm just curious, at what point in the process did you get four people that are, will, four groups that are willing to make an offer? I only say that in relation to where, what the status of the park was before you entered the picture. And now you're giving me some good uh, feelings in, with regard to uh, we raising of income um, and your uh, efforts toward the wastewater. That would be, that was a horrible situation. Uh, and your good use of uh, mobilizing funds into cash reserves. Uh, what, what's, what part of that if not all of it was contributing toward getting four 
candidates or am I well, just I'm gonna keep this, that? I'm going to keep this at a kind of a high level, but but um, one and but I'm not letting out anything that's proprietary or confidential. Um, one group that, that's that's interested in making an offer and is represented by council and has um, financing is the association, the actual residents. And they've been interested in, in, in taking control of the park for a while. So I, I inherited them. And, yeah. and, they've been, and so that's that's one. Um, the other thing we did was we we reached out initially when I came in. We reached out to people that make loans to mobile parks. There's a there's a niche of lenders that specialize in this asset class, yeah. and we spoke to them, and we talked to people in our network about who might be interested in, in making an offer. Um, so we that's how we identified uh, two of them. Um, another uh, person that's interested in making an offer is a is a local person from Easton that that. Um, I believe owns a mobile park in Raynham. So that was just a, a so someone who was interested in this asset for a while and could never get a deal done with the previous owner. Um, so that, so, so the other thing that's going to happen is whoever we identify. So the, this is sort of inside baseball, but it's important for the town to know about the person that makes the offer that gets presented to the court is called the stocking horse. And that's an offer that me and my business judgment deems to be an acceptable offer that, that it's going to be able to um, be a good caretaker for the park, an appropriate custodian of the park. And insofar as there are any concerns about that person, the town would be able to talk to me about it before I presented it to the court and talk to the court about it ultimately. That, that person would be called the stocking horse. Their offer would be subject to an auction and ultimately court approval. And so if some, so, so people would be invited a second time to come in and top that stocking horse. And we would try to get it out to the broadest possible group of people who might be interested in purchasing the park. And uh, people either come forward or not. We'll either have an auction or not, depending on um, the, the original bid that we bring to the court, the or opening bid we bring to the court. Thank you. Marcy, it's Craig Barger. Um, so I'm still a little bit confused about why we need an auction if you have a, if you if you have a viable candidate for purchasing the park. Um, it's a legal requirement. Um, this is not a private sale. This is a sale that's being sold by a court and the, the court has the town as a stakeholder, but the mortgagee is a stakeholder and almost uniformly, almost uniformly, court sales are done by auction. And the first option, the stocking horse, creates the, um, the floor of the auction. That, that's the minimum that will be generated by the auction is the, is the, the original stocking horse offer that's, that primes the whole, that gets the whole process started. So I, th I thought I saw, I think Kate had a comment or a question. Yeah, I'm just wondering, I can't, I'm anticipating what the board's concern is and, and that's the, and, and maybe you can expand upon it, Frank, is the auction process because this potential buyer first gets vetted, you know, socialized um, through the town. Uh, we have the option to object. All of those kinds of um, protections are in place and the court reviews it. Okay, and you go proceed to auction. I think the board's fear is um, could someone who we felt was disreputable and didn't have a good track record, let's say in other mobile home parks, and we're fearful that we have the same exact situation as we had before with a poor um, management of the park. What are the protections to prevent well, about that in the auction process? So, so, so the other thing that happens that we, this is also something that we can work on. I'm not sure we work it on, on this call, but other than at a broad high level, but in broad strokes, I think um, if the town had concerns about someone parachuting into the auction that wasn't, didn't have a good character, did what wasn't wasn't someone who would be um, an appropriate owner. 
we could we could talk about sale procedures about what so so this is stepping back what we, we when we go into the court with the first offer the stocking horse offer we could also go to court with agreed to sale procedures who what what we would need to qualify a bidder and those sale procedures might involve monetary issues like a deposit what's it what, what you know what's what's you know you can't participate in the auction unless you put a deposit down but we'd also want paperwork that demonstrates to our satisfaction that you are a um, competent uh, 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 person with a, with a good with, with, who's going to be able to operate this park appropriately I, I I'm, I'm sort of um, I'm not being precise about that but I, I, I guess my short answer would be some of these concerns could be addressed in a sales procedure, an agreed to sales procedure order that we could present to the court. Like a, and, I, and I understand this a rider is not- of sorts, Like a I rider of sorts that in order to bid on this property in an auction, uh, you have to meet certain requirements as correct. a measure of protection for us. And, cool. and then beyond that, I do, I also think that the purpose of the auction is that is so uh, the town or uh, the stakeholders involved do get the best uh, sale price, so there's no, you know, backdoor deal or anything. Not um, not to sound nefarious or anything like that, but so that it is the highest price. But we also want, we want the highest price, but at the same time, we want the best candidate with the best reputation. Yeah. So, Mr. Lamb, you put your finger on the the, the critical issue, which is the, the court has to recognize the interests of the the people who have an economic interest in the park, not just the owner, but the, the people with liens and other stakeholders. So having getting the highest possible economic return from the auction, that's an important interest and the court needs to be mindful of it. On the other hand, um, you don't want to have an, an irresponsible owner, someone, someone who comes in that's undercapitalized or doesn't have the right experience or expertise to properly own or operate a manufactured um, home uh, park. So, so those kind of things can be baked into the sales procedures. And, and again, the sales procedures would be negotiated before they're presented to the court. And then the court signs off on it. And the court, the, the court may have a different view of what the town and the receiver or the, mm-hmm. or other people think is an appropriate um, person to uh, participate in the auction. The, the other person that that has something to say about the auction is the person that makes that original offer. So if you're putting money up, you you, you might insist that someone who's going to compete with you at an auction put down a, 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 a significant deposit because you don't want to be uh, dealing with someone running up the price if that person doesn't have skin in the game. So so I think Mr. Bagger and, and Ms. Um, Fedorov and, and you, Mr. Lamb, raise a very, very important point, and that gets negotiated in the sale procedure. So nothing gets... Um, so moving forward from here, can we have assurance that it will be, it will be baked into this, this procedure, those two things you just said? I will give you assurance that, 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 that we will sit down with Ms. Federoff and her colleagues before any offer is presented to the court mm-hmm. and scrub the offer and get input from town council on the offer and get input from town council on the sale procedures. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think I, I, based on, I've been doing this for a while, and based on my experience with the town, I, I think we'd be likely to accommodate the town. Insofar as we do, we are not entirely on the same page, uh, 100% on the same page, it gets, it gets resolved by the court, and the town has the opportunity to have their day in court and explain to the judge you know, why the sale procedures don't work under the circumstances and wh- right. why extra protection is necessary. So what I envision is a collaborative process and we present a, an agreed to offer and an agreed to sale procedures to the court. In any event, everything's approved by the court. Um, and the town would have the opportunity to participate in and object to any procedures that they had issues with. I just have one question. Really? Uh, that's all right. Um, if that's all right, Dottie. Sure. We have four offers or in, and we're anticipating four offers. Is there a due date for those offers? No. 
can, um, well, so, 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 I mean, this, well, this, like if you get an offer tomorrow and then you want to do something, then the other, other the next offer doesn't come in for three weeks. I mean, how long are you supposed to sit on an offer? Um, you'd be, you'd be a great receiver. You'd be a great bankruptcy lawyer. Um, sometimes you gotta, you know, force their hand a little bit, like, you know, uh, well, no, you're right. So, so, um, so, so I told every person with a, who's interested in buying the park that the first acceptable offer might not be the best offer, but the first acceptable offer that I get, the first reasonable offer um, that that's in the ballpark, it's I'm going to bring it to the court. And then the court's going to establish a deadline to make counter offers. And if we get, if we get counter offers, then there's an auction. Um, uh, so, the court, is, the court is the the, so, so the key thing is getting that first offer. The key right. Thing, and what is the time between that first offer and when the court establishes uh, a due date for the secondary offers? How much time is in between there? I'm just trying to so, narrow it down a little bit. So, so it's it's negotiated. Right. So if I let's say I got an offer today, I'd go back to them and ask them to improve it. We we'd negotiate um, some more about the terms. And then I get a, I, I, let's say, let's say, tip, and, and let's say that process is all done and I get, I get an offer that I think is acceptable. Um, and I, and I have the town behind me and the town believes that that's a, an appropriate offer. Then we bring it to the court and we ask the court for sale procedures. We ask the court for an auction day and we ask the court for a deadline to make counter bids. Now, if I'm the buyer, if I'm the person that's putting the, first money out, making the, the stock he wants to offer. I want to have the auction as soon as possible because I want as little competition as possible. If I'm the seller, which I am, I want to have more time to find someone who's going to come in and top the stocking horse. So I'm sure that I'm getting the, the, the best last dollar out of the, out of the process. So, so, so the answer is when the auction is, is a negotiation, I don't think under unless there's some exigency, if there's some emergency that we have to deal with, and I hope we don't have to go down that route. Um, without an emergency, I think I think the court would probably probably do a an, an, an auction in three to four weeks, something like that. So I think it's a th I think you get the you get into court, you get the sale procedures approved, and I think the judge would give you an auction in three to four weeks. Mr. Morrissey, do you have a, 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 a an idea in your mind as to what the value of the property is? No, I don't. I, I mean, I've seen I've seen um, a lot of documents that were generated um, before I was appointed that with different values, but but I, I don't. That what's going to value this property is the process, the auction process. There was an appraisal done, as I recall. Did that? Did we ever see that appraisal? The, I think we, the appraisal is in the data room, but I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know what the comps are, and I'm, I'm not an appraiser. But it's, it's. I mean, I, I'll, I'll give you the, 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 the park is only worth what someone will pay for, it. and any appraisal that we obtained was obtained before COVID nineteen, and it's, it's stale, frankly, um, and. The best appraisal in the world is not as accurate as what a buyer will actually pay for an asset. And the process, this is a this is not my process. This is a process that courts have used in these types of situations is to have have a stocking horse which sets the floor, sets the minimum that's recovered from the asset, and then has an auction to test whether or not the stocking horse was uh, an appropriate value. So the auction is going to the auction is going to value this, okay. but but you know another concern which you, I I think is implicit in your question is, well do 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 we have to sell this property, and for at least as much as the mortgage? And the answer is no. We can sell over the mortgage lien. We can sell for less than what what the record encumbrances are. There's a, there's a way to sell over through the receivership statute. So the courts have been closed uh, through COVID. Is how hard is it going to be and timely to get? Well, what, say 
courts, it, it sounds like, oh, we call the courts, get a date next week, and then we move forward. Yeah. What's the um, matter? So, so that's a great point, too. The, court, the courts are open, just not for in-person stuff. Unless I think the courts are open for criminal matters be, because of constitutional concerns. And, but, 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 but the courts are open for, for, for civil matters and this receivership um, telephonically. And I think once I, I think once the seller, me, the buyer and the town have their ducks lined up and have an acceptable transaction, I think the, the court's going to be very accommodating to us. And we, we would do it like this. We would have probably a Zoom hearing. It might not be an in-person hearing, but but I, I, I think this is an important matter and it's important to the court. And if we had a transaction and, and everything lined up, um, we, 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 could, we could get into court pretty quickly. And, and Frank, on that point, too, much of the discussion will be on the papers, you know, and there is some argument there, but much of much of the um, the stuff that the court will review will be on the papers, I imagine, on this kind of proceeding. And um, would you agree with that? I, I would agree with that. And and and. Um, the, the court wants the parties, the receiver, the town, the residents. The court wants us to work to get to a, a a consensual solution, and I'm committed to doing that. And you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna negotiate something. And if there's a, if there are issues we can't agree on, they'll, they'll be discrete issues, and those will be de decided by the court based on briefing. It, it, this, the court, the court isn't going to do the. The court may have questions and have a hearing to answer questions, but in my experience, um, the court will decide any open issues. And I, I you know, there may be, um, but I don't think they'll be material. Um, and the court will do, decide them on the papers, in my view. So it's it's a paper um, focused process. Kate's up. Miss Miss Federoff's a thousand percent right. It's it's going to be done consensually and then any open issues will be resolved uh, with briefing and then the court will have a hearing but mostly the questions yeah and we've had i mean as messy as they are we've had hearings um with the court plymouth um it's telephonically others have computer programs um they're all trying to manage this and and it changes by county by county. So I ha I can't say what Bristol's done. I haven't been in Bristol since COVID, but um, th this one is going to have priority. It is criminal, it's family and other emergency measures. And obviously my, the, the stuff that we were dealing with were neither criminal and family and we still got in um, to the court. So. No, and, and, and I think it's just getting, I think it's getting, it's getting better and better that the, the, the courts are doing a better job um, with remote hearings and handling things remotely. And I, I, I think judge green's a, a great judge and she's, she, she wants this matter resolved. And so she, she will um, give us whatever procedures we, we need to get this matter over the goal line. But what, and I think, um, Mr. Lamb or Mr. Bagger or Mr. King pointed out that what what triggers everything is that initial offer that it, that the, the, the first person to make a reasonable offer that's acceptable to the stakeholders that's what's going to you know start everything in motion. And I think once we have the the, the offer, I, I I expect that the courts are going to accommodate us and get us get us where we need to go very very quickly. All right. Well, thank you. Um, you know, this is the mo the the most action that we've seen on this in such a short time, from January to July. Um, well, I I appreciate that. I mean, uh, Madam Chairman. I mean, this was tough when we took it over. There, there were, were were operating losses. Had, there were a whole, you know, whole a whole array of problems. We've got money in the bank now, so that's a very right. good story. And we've got potential exit, a long term solution, which is a buyer with capital and confidence that can be an appropriate custodian of this park. 
but you've, you've done that while also being very uh, thoughtful and courteous to the residents that live there and, and helpful to them uh, during this transition process. And we really appreciate that um, on behalf of our residents. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. And I appreciate all the help the town's given us, in particular, town council. Um, Ms. Federoff's been a, a real professional, and she's made life a lot easier for, for me. Um, and I, I'm very grateful. I'm grateful for the board, to the the town in all respects. And um, the cash in cash out report was very helpful. That's the first time we've ever seen uh, numbers, legitimate numbers for this, for this uh, project. So. Yeah. And the key thing, and, and, and I think the last time I saw you, um, I said all the money that gets generated by this park stays in the park. Right. So no money gets taken out of this process um, it all stays in, in the park until, until we're done. So. Great. Well, thank you very much. If there's no other questions, we'll let you uh, go for the evening. And we really appreciate you coming today to speak with us. And good luck as you move forward with us. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. We'll ring off. Thank you. All right, um, the next item on this agenda is we have general minutes dated January 27th, if everyone has had a chance to take a look at that. Would someone like to make a motion to accept the general meeting minutes for the Rent Control Board of January 27th? So moved, Craig Barger. Second, Chuck King. Craig and Chuck, uh, roll call vote, Craig. Barger, yes. King, yes. Lamb, yes. Janetti, yes. Excellent. And with that, um, I will also take a motion to adjourn. If I could get a first, a second, and a roll call on that. So moved. Go ahead, Chuck. I'll second, second it. So Craig made, uh, Chuck made the motion and Craig seconded. Roll call vote, Craig. Roger, yes. King, yes. Sam, yes. Full Janetti, yes. It's uh, a li we're a little bit out of our, our sync with Tom not here. <laughs> no, we'll get the sync back. Thank you Absolutely. very much. Thank you, Kate. Being here tonight. We Thank really you, appreciate you being here. Do I stay on this link for the next meeting? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs>